everyone. So today in Restaurant de, de la Nina at Casa Rivera, we're going to be making some strawberry shortcake as well as cocova or cocovi. However you say it, I gotta figure out how to say it. Cocovi, but it translates to cock with wine. I think it's a French dish. I don't know if Julia Child was the first one who created it or not, but it's a weird name. But today, right now, we're gonna show you the strawberry yeah, it's shortcake. A very weird name. Yeah, Ooh, strawberry shortcake weird. recipe. So what we need for the strawberry shortcake recipe is some almond flour, some sweetener, like the sweetener of your choice. I use monk fruit because monk fruit, um, it, you really can't taste the, the flavor because we were using stevia and it's too powerful. Some coconut milk. Um, vanilla extract is a staple when you're baking. Um, some baking soda. Uh, some fresh lemon juice. I'm going to use, um, they require lemon juice, but I like to get some fresh squeezed lemon juice out of a freshly squeezed lemon. Um, and some eggs. Okay. And yeah. a little bit of kosher salt. Not too much. So, the first step we're going to do, I'm looking at this recipe, and it's from Low Carb Maven, I think it is, is measure the dry ingredients. So, the recipe calls for three cups of almond flour. So, I'm going to go ahead and do the three cups of almond flour. I did not take, I got these from Amazon, these measuring cups, but I didn't take anything off because I feel like if I take them off, we're going to lose them, I swear. So, I keep all my measuring cups together, so that way... I can find them. So that's one. All right. It's two, three cups. Oh, the, oh now you're speaking Spanish, James? When every it's time clean. I'm speaking Spanish because I'm learning Spanish. It's clean. And James gets upset when I talk Spanish to him when he's focusing on something. Mm -hmm. He really prefers me to speak in English. But I'm like, Dude, I'm practicing. I want to be proficient in the language. Yeah. So, that's three cups of almond flour. I'm probably going to make it because it shouldn't be that lumpy. But it's super fine. But let me just stir it around a little bit. I'm not no baking expert or anything like that. So, the next dry ingredient. Okay, so, let's see. The next dry ingredient, I think, would be the sugar. Uh, half a cup of low-carb sugar. And I'm using monk fruit. I love monk fruit because it really doesn't have that overbearing sugar taste. Oh, no, it has just the right amount of sweetness. And also, it doesn't... It's better than stevia. Yeah, much better than stevia. Screw and, you, stevia. And it doesn't alter your blood sugar. Right? Yes, and it looks just right. like regular sugar. Can yep. you see that? But fruit, it people. doesn't give you all that blood stevia sugar sucks. spike and that glycemic spike. Um, a half a teaspoon of salt. Half a teaspoon. Stevia oh, sucks. Okay, Jay. That's a hashtag. I think they get to know that. I think they know that. A half a teaspoon of now salt. Now they do now. Okay. Um, let's see what else. So that's three cups almond flour, a half a cup of low carb sugar, one teaspoon, te half a teaspoon of um, salt. Then I need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. What I'm supposed to be doing right now is heating the oven to 350 degrees, but our oven heats fast, so I'm going to wait for a minute before I heat that. Yeah, what else, my love? <laughs> Hold on. Um, half teaspoon of baking soda. I think those are all the dry ingredients. So Yes. Okay, so now i got to mix this really good. If you have an electric mix mixer, that will be a hand mixer. That will be good, but if you just have your regular hand power, let me use this one. We have this too. And you want to whisk that together and mix it really good and get out any lumps if possible. That flour is really lumpy. Usually when we get almond flour, it's not that lumpy, but whatever. Um, so we're just going to mix the ingredients in good, the dry ingredients. And I think this is a lot of almond flour, so I don't know if it's going to be in one pot, one pan. I may need to use two pans. Okay, so now that I mix that really good... Now it's time to put the wet ingredients in. And sometimes, like, I know some recipes, you could do the dry ingredients in one bowl or the uh, dry and the dry the wet ingredients in another bowl. So, like, let's see what they say. Then add the eggs. Okay. Coconut milk. So it, it requires three eggs. So I'm going to add the three eggs to it. Okay. One. Okay. 
And then another one. Damn it. Two. Oh shit. Let me crack that. I don't want eggshells in there. Two. All right. Three. Okay, so. Shit. There we go. Bam. I knew I was going to get that egg yolk on my phone, but it's all right. That's what happens when you're baking. It gets messy. Um, okay, so now the coconut milk, which is three-fourths of a cup of coconut milk. And where's the bowl I have? Like, when you're using Goya coconut milk or any coconut milk, at the top, there's going to be, like, some cream that goes in it. Um, you usually could put the cream on the side. You could use the cream for something else. Because later on, I think I'm going to try to make some ice cream. I made some homemade ice cream the other day, but I didn't have enough vanilla so it didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Um, vanilla is expensive, eh? Yes, usually is. this is really creamy. I don't know what's going on. It's usually a real thick cream or whatever. But since it's not as creamy, I'm just going to stir it to stir it into that coconut milk. Right? And then it says three-fourths of a cup of coconut milk. So. Okay. So I just do three of these, right? Because three-fourths of a cup, and that's yeah. one-fourth of a cup. So is mm -hmm. that three of those? Yeah. Okay. I'm surprised because usually it requires more coconut milk than this. And th again, this is a low-carb uh, version in strawberry shortcake. It can have regular milk and this and that. But we're using a low-carb, low-sugar version. And I'm going right. to save that. Okay? And then now... It is um, pouring the batter. Okay, go ahead. And I'm, so it, what happens when, when the when, when the oven gets smoky in here, right? So gets, what do you have to do? It gets smoky, so I'm turning on the fan. Right. All right, so now we're going to just pour the batter into oh, there. I think it's enough. I think this will be good. It is going to be enough. Okay, so it's just enough batter. I hope it's not... All right. Come on, let's see. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna wait for that to heat up. So while I wait for the stove to heat up, we're gonna, where's the oven mitts? It's, go ahead. Now we're gonna make some simple Carolina brown rice. It's so simple, I don't have a rice cooker yet, but like with the coco V or coco vin, or coco V, however you say, I gotta figure out, or coco wine. <laughs> um, you could make it with brown rice or it's like as a side. You can make a brown rice, a salad, or some broccoli. We decided to go with brown rice today. Um, I may make a salad, I'm not sure, depending on how I feel. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is this recipe, because we don't really eat a lot of brown rice. <clears throat> so rice, one cup of rice, and then we're gonna have two and a half cups of water. So I'm gonna bring the water to a boil. Let me just put the water in here. Um, two and a half cups. And it's okay, I'm using tap water because it's going to be boiled out, so it doesn't matter. That's as good. Tap water, it's not as toxic as I think. Yeah, Unless you're in Flint, Michigan. <laughs> Oops, sorry, did I say that out loud? <clears throat> ah. I'm doing Flint, Michigan a favor anyway. Yes, your water is dirty, you know it, and we okay, know it, so there you were, go. And didn't they have a big thing in the news about that, that that was... The government kind of helped. It came, come, it came in and stepped in and did. Oh no, we we have no idea right now. Uh, yeah, no, I don't. Know. Love you. So I'm just gonna bring this to a boil. I put a little bit of salt in it just to make it boil faster, and then we're gonna put one cup of rice to two and a half cups, and we're gonna let it boil out. So let me just put one cup of rice in there, and then when it boils, that's when I'm gonna pour the rice in. I'm not gonna pour the rice in right now, but to give you an idea of one cup of rice. That's about one cup of rice, half brown rice actually. And we're gonna set that aside for later because now, now the real no. cooking begins. Okay, go ahead. All right, so now the rice is just simple. It's just boiling right now. We had to run to the store because the guy who sold me the wine, so you'll see why we'll use it later, this wine, it needed a cork screw. So James had to run out and get a corker, a cork remover, whatever you call it. You said it right for a time, cork screw. A cork screw. So, so now we're gonna head over to, we're gonna let this cook. So, 
we had to run out because, well, James had to run out and get a, a corkscrew because the one that he sold me didn't have, um, it was in a twist off. So now we're just cooking the rice, letting it boil. And then for some reason our stove was really smoky, so it stopped smoking, which is a good thing. But it didn't cook anything, it didn't bake. So fingers crossed that our stove is working so we can have this strawberry shortcake. Yes, I think I read a recipe, but I don't want to put it in the microwave, but if we have to, we may just have to put it, what are you doing? In the microwave. If, if we have to, we may just have to put put the batter in the microwave, but hopefully, hopefully the stove works. But now let's go over and start making the stuff for the coco vent. Okay, so with this coco vent, uh, it requires some sweet onions, some diced carrots, some cremini mushrooms. If you don't have cremini mushrooms, you can also get white button mushrooms as well, or whatever. So, and it just says, dice up some, I'm not a onion dicer, so don't, and I know I'm supposed to do like this to cut, but it's, it's very hard for me to cut right now, doing it that way. So I'm just gonna just cut some onions up really quick. You know, it says one sweet onion, and you get a sweet onion and you just cut it up I have a skin I'm doing a, 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 a bad job, but I like that I got these great knives. James' sister bought us these knives for Christmas, uh, cuisine art, and they're much better than the old bowl knives that I had. The cutting is so much better. James, can you do me a favor, love? Um, can you check on that rice to make sure the water didn't boil out? Because we just got to keep an eye on it. Is there still water in it? There was still water. Okay. So we just got to keep an eye on it while we're cutting that because that water can boil out real fast and you can burn the rice but anyway so we're gonna put some um, I hope this is good I texted my best friend who likes to cook a lot and she cooked this a long time ago but the thing about this one that I'm cooking it's a recipe from a site called clean food crush and she focuses on clean food and clean eating so a lot of this is like using coconut milk and things that you wouldn't find in a regular one I guess um, but I think the milk is the only difference, if I'm not mistaken, because I think the regular one like uses full milk, but this one we can use coconut milk or almond milk or cashew milk instead of full milk. Um, and we're using uh, white wine. You can use, don't use cooking wine, because you said cooking wine is not, well, can you check the vat please? Okay, so oil is good. Okay, cooking wine. Hold on. Give me a second. Uh, sorry. Did I tell them already that the stove wasn't working? Yes, it did. So, let's see if it works now. We got the smoke. I think it was too smoky. So hopefully our strawberry shortcake can be saved. Uh, but anyway, cooking wine. Not Don't use cooking wine, I meant to say. Don't use cooking wine because um, it has like a lot of uh, acid and different preservatives in it and stuff so they say use a wine that you would actually drink and I looked up a white wine she said any white wine but then I looked up a blog and it was like if you're using uh, cooking like chicken or seafood use Sauvignon Blanc or Pinot Grigio you know and the guy at the liquor store gave me a Pinot Grigio because he said he knew how to cook but I don't know I think he just wanted to sell something on sale because he just gave that to me um, so I said you know what I'm gonna do this I wanted to get out of the store um, but if you don't have chicken, excuse me, if you don't have cook, oh, excuse me, regular drinking wine on hand, you can use chicken broth. But that's going to be later in the recipe, okay? So I'm going to finish chopping these onions. I'm going to finish chopping these onions. So I cheated a bit. Are you, it's on? It's on, yeah. I cheated a bit because they say you have a one whole carrot peel, but I already got the carrot sliced for me at the store. So I think, but do you think that will be like a carrot? I don't know peeled and sliced, but I'm going to slice it a bit. So let's just slice this carrot really quick. Okay. Do you like carrots, James? I've never asked you. Yeah, I like carrots. Huh? Yeah, I like carrots. Let's see. Alright. Sorry, I'm making all you safety people nervous. But I feel like cutting like this is helping me more. I sound like one of those people that say, oh, I could drive drunk, but still. But if I go like this, my hand will freaking slip. You're supposed to like cut with your knuckles like that and facing away from you so you don't cut yourself. But I feel like that my hand will slip if I do that. Uh, okay, so now this is cremini mushrooms. If you get like a, a white 
you could get white buttons, but these are cremini. And I kind of guessed a pound. It was like $4.99 a pound. And I actually put it in, but they didn't have a weight scale. And I actually knew that it was a pound. So now I'm just going to dice these cremini mushrooms. Uh, dice them to make them mushroom-like, I guess. Yes. Or whatever. And this is going to go in the main chicken dish, which we're going to get into later. And I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to get a little knife. Excuse me. Because that one, I need to, I want the stems on it. So let me get a little knife so I can figure out how to get the stems. Ah, <laughs> On guard. Is that what they say when they uh, take out a knife? I guess. Yeah, because I wanted, I want to cut it with the stems on it, as you can see. So it could look like a real mushroom. That's what I was trying to get and I wasn't getting that. You can show the mushrooms. I cut the mushrooms because it was taking forever to cut or whatever because I wanted to cut them in a certain way. So I cut the cremini mushrooms, the carrots, the onions, and then you can mince your garlic, but I already bought some minced garlic already. So let's see. I already have some minced garlic. It's like three garlic cloves. If you have garlic, garlic cloves, you could just take three and mince them. So we're just gonna put that aside right now. That garlic is potent. I think I'm gonna cut a couple of more carrots, um, just because. Oh shit! I need to take off the knife. The knife. So let's go here and just cut that a bit. And then now we're gonna go to the next step, which is I'm not gonna show this part because it doesn't need to be shown. Is we're gonna. Um, butter you could go to clean food crush because it's like better than butter I guess or more healthier than butter or whatever so we're gonna take a tablespoon it smells like raw honey kind of we're gonna it take does. a table yeah we're gonna take a tablespoon it's hard to get out but I should have uh, softened it a bit but it looks like beeswax it feels like beeswax a bit <laughs> but we're gonna take a tablespoon of that and we're gonna melt it on the stove right yes Funny, they tell you to mind your beeswax, and there's something actually called beeswax. Beeswax, right? I actually never even knew that until recently. Not I that think... this is beeswax, but... So I cleaned the chicken, that you, the, the part that you didn't want to see? Yes. I cleaned the chicken, thank you, my love. I cleaned the chicken, the part that you didn't want to see? Oh, I thought my earrings fell off, but they didn't. Um, and now I'm going to wait for this to, the, the ghee to melt. And once the ghee melts, I'm just going to put like some salt and pepper on the chicken because right there's going to be a lot of different flavors in the chicken where you don't need a lot of different seasonings because it's going to be like coconut milk some wine but the wine's going to cook out some onions some garlic um and all that kind of stuff some dijon mustard that we have here yes. and um we're going to have like a uh, some flour for a little slurry to make the sauce thick so hopefully this is good i've never had it before but it sounded fancy so yes. since it sounds fancy let's see what happens right um, so now I'm going to get some chicken and I didn't even realize I took out some chicken. They don't need to see that. Let me put it on low. So I'm going to put the chicken in because I need to season the chicken as well. And some, uh, skinless or boneless, depending on how you like it. Let's see if all this chicken fits in the pan. Cause that's the thing. Like if all the chicken doesn't fit in the pan, I guess I could just cook it twice. Not twice, but you know what I mean. I think it's just fit. Not all of it, so I may have to use a separate pan, but using a separate pan. So I'm just going to put some sea salt, sink, sprinkle sea salt on that chicken. Sorry for all you vegans, but I'm not a vegetarian or a vegan. We're both not. We're not. We do eat, we had Beyond Meat the other day, and I like pepper, so I, I uh, sprinkle a lot of pepper on my stuff. Yes. You know, we're both not vegans, but we do eat and you can actually get lemon juice as well but, but it's not the I'm same i'm i'm putting it more on james than myself i'm saying and then then in the thing so let me go ahead there's not supposed to be seeds in there but i'll get those seeds out in a minute okay so now that lemon juice and then we're gonna do a teaspoon 
of vanilla. I'm surprised it's just a teaspoon. It should be a tablespoon, but we're gonna have strawberries, so the strawberries will help, right? Teaspoon of vanilla, and I need vanilla. Vanilla is like $5. Can you believe this little thing is like five or $6? I saw one at the health store where we go, and it's like, uh, $20. Not that one, just a different one, like a different vanilla extract. So now we're making the price. batter. See now how that batter is getting really nice and battery. Is that the way you say it? I that's, guess. that's the batter that we're making. I'm going to stir that into smooth. And then let's see what else. Um, okay, pour the batter. Now I'm going to preheat the oven. I'm going to preheat it to 350. Okay, and now the batter is nice and smooth. I oh, think this should fast. be enough, but I'm wondering if I should make get it in a bigger pan. I wonder, because they don't have a picture of the pan that it's in. No, it should be fine. But that pan should be fine, because I feel like this may be too much for that pan. Yes. But we'll see. Um, so, all right. So let's see what else they say on this. So I'm going to continue to stir the batter just to mix all the ingredients in to make sure everything is good. Uh, let's see. I hate that with recipes, they wanted to write a whole fucking novel instead of just like giving the damn recipe. I don't need to know all that other shit. Um, so let's see. Okay. So now the next thing is we're going to go ahead and line a paper excuse me, take some butter or cooking spray, whatever you have, and then grease the pan, right? Grease the pan. Mm -hmm. And then put some parchment paper because the parchment paper, line it with parchment paper. The parchment paper is going to help um, the cake come out. Because the last time we made chocolate cake, it kind of stuck to the, it stuck to the pan. All right. So hopefully I can make that a little better. I, think, I really feel like we should make a bigger pan, but if we need to, I have a second pan. So no, no fret there if it's like too much in there. Okay. I don't think we'll be just fine. I think we salvaged it. So I'm going to let it cool for a bit, like on for five, 10 minutes, but we're going to set this to the side and then we're going to dolly oh, it up. I told you, can't wait. Oh, so yeah. this going to turn out. We're going to dolly it up a little later with, with cream and strawberries. Oh yeah. I tasted a little bit of it and tastes good. Um, so we're going to do that. Like you. Shades. Nina. All right. I think I put too much chicken. So now that we have this chicken here, we're going to cook it. Um, I don't need to put the wine in until now. So right now I'm going to make the chicken. I'm going to cook it until it gets a little brown. And then once it gets brown, I'm going to take it off because we're going to have to put it back in because, um, what's going to happen is I got to cook some bacon in the same pan. And we're going to cook some four strips of bacon to get it all nice Hello. and crumbly and uh, top it. So I'm excited to, because I like all the ingredients. No, I'm excited. Oh, oh, sorry. You got it? Yeah, I'm fine. I like all the ingredients. I like all the ingredients in this recipe, but I've never had them like all together. So hopefully they taste good, like onions, carrots, um, mush, cremini mushrooms, uh, the coconut milk, the wine. The wine's going to cook out in the bacon. So it sounds good. So hopefully um, it tastes as good as it sounds. So let's stay tuned. And then hopefully I'm waiting for the ice cream. Well, coconut milk, when you make homemade ice cream, you have to make sure the ice cream is cold. And that just reminds me, I need to go get a loaf pan and put the loaf pan in the freezer. Excellent. And we'll come back in for, with you. It is brown on both sides for three to four minutes per side. It's not fully done because we got to put it back in the pan to cook. But so right now we're going to have like that chicken the chicken flavor as well as the ghee, right? That's and we're gonna dope so far. The bacon should be chopped, but I'm not gonna chop the bacon right now. I like to chop my yeah, bacon. Chop some up. James, Just put it in there. I like to chop <laughs> my bacon after I cook it. So right now, the next step is we're gonna put some bacon. I felt like turkey bacon wouldn't do the trick. I mean, you can probably use turkey bacon, but what's the point? And I and I don't like and I like turkey bacon myself, as we already know. But I was like, you know what? Maybe it'll be better off just regular bacon. What the hell, right? Yeah. Let's it's not like we have it all the time, so. Yeah. That's and it's just going to be chopped up, and it's going to be sprinkled on the chicken. And we want it to be crispy, although turkey bacon is not dry, contrary to popular belief. It doesn't always come out crispy either, so, you know, 
You would like your crispy bacon, am I right, my love? Season you yeah. So, it so, would make sense. We're gonna bake this, I would say fry this until it's crispy. And then once we fry it until it's crispy, I'm gonna put the onions and the mushrooms and the carrots Ooh. in here. And I then can't wait to see that. Take that. So now this is the next step of uh, putting the bacon. And once this is done, I'm gonna uh, get all the fat and grease out, chop it up, and set it to the side because I'm gonna put it in on an, at the end. So let's go ahead and stop that right now. Right now, as you can see, the bacon is crispy. I'm oh, setting yes. it aside because we're not gonna use that right now. I gotta chop it. So now I'm going to get some onions and carrots and add it to the same plate. Woo! Oh, the same skillet. oh yeah. Bring on the vegetables. Oh. I didn't even do that. I turned my guy didn't realize I forgot with hot oil. Woo! And that was the type of oil some of you viewers are used to using. And I don't mean on food either. Ha, 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 so I'm going to add what? Nothing. I'm nothing, gonna... nothing, nothing. I mean, I'm only 100 to like 150 people watch this anyway, so. Ha, ha, ha. Well, you never know. I know, this I know. This is a popular dish. I think Julia Child had it in her cookbook. Oh, she had this dish in her cookbook. It's she did. French... Oh. But we'll hashtag that too. It's a French dish. So we're going to cook that until it starts to brown, the onions and the carrots. Alright, so we'll hashtag screw Stevie on Julia Child. Excellent. Screw who? Screw Stevie on hashtag Julia Child oh, also. Okay, Julia. So we're going to cook the carrots and the onions until the onions start to brown. Yes. Okay. And then we're going to add the rest of the ingredients. <laughs> That's Julia Child imitation. And you can rate me on that too if you want. Please do! <laughs> yeah, let me know when they look brown. It's only been a minute! <laughs> and they're getting there! <laughs> <laughs> he's doing, if you don't know, he's doing a Julia Child impression. Yeah, what was that happen? I don't know if you guys can ask me this. If, if there's an older viewer out there, what would stop with every time she would say something? She was always laughing. She was always very happy, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. you know, only the little she really loved her. her job. Yeah, that's what you, when you do it, when you find your passion and you love it, you're happy. Maybe we gotta love our passion more like Julia Child does. It's very inspirational. You ever watch Julia and Julia, you'll see. It's a chick flick, but it's not that bad of a movie. It draws very big inspiration. For those of you that have lost it. And what were you gonna say, my love? Hold on. So we're continuing to cook, and as you can already see, it's already getting brown. I'm taking over the narration over here, but it's, all right. it's already getting brown. And it's only been like, as you see, it's been like a little over two minutes already. So that's a little bit. That's pretty good. You all know? right. So now that is, I'm gonna stir in the garlic and the mushrooms. Oh yeah. And then continue to cook, stirring it for five minutes. Ooh. So let me add in the garlic and mushrooms now. <clears throat> garlic. It's supposed to be three minutes cold, but I always put extra garlic because I love garlic. Yes. You know, how is it smelling, my love? So far, so good. Yan can cook would be so proud. Hashtag Ooh. that too. Is he still around? Yeah. That Chinese cook named Yan, I don't remember his first name, but he used to have a show called Yan Can Cook. Oh, I don't know. Also on PBS, but it was like more recently after Julia Child. We used to watch it all the time also. So now they say to stir this for about five Hashtag. minutes. I'm gonna add the chicken back in soon, and then the wine, the wine that I've been talking about so for so long. So let's add these in. And I've gotta stir this for about five minutes, stirring occasionally. Oh, shit. Damn it. No, oh, it's a mushroom. Not, not miss that's okay. That's okay. All right, I gotta do something, so you can cut that. So now we have the mushrooms and the carrots and the oh, onion and garlic. Wow. So we're gonna add the chicken back to the pan, right? I'm gonna add the chicken back to the pan. You know, but I should add, this is almost like cooking stir fry, if you really think about is it. Is it? Almost, because you gotta cook the chicken first, and then you gotta add it back, and then you gotta add the sauce, and then you gotta add the vegetables, take the chicken out, then add it back. Just watch my video of stir fry, you'll see it. Really? It's kind of similar. And then you add more, well, except for adding soy sauce in this case, you kinda add, you know, the wine that you're about to add, but it's almost the same thing as so, stir fry. So, this is a Pinot Grigio that I got from the wine store. Um, cooking wine, we're gonna add two cups. Fireman. 
And don't worry, the wine's gonna cook out. But they say the wine, oh shit, I yeah, can't feel that's gonna make the fire. I'm not yeah, Bobby Flay. You, we don't want my darling to cook out, <laughs> nor me. So the wine is gonna cook out, but it's gonna give it a nice, rich flavor. They well, say. Bobby Flay, let's tag him too. <laughs> All right. So now I'm gonna keep this on low for about 15, 20 minutes. Have the other chicken I'm gonna cook later because it can't fit. So I'm gonna keep it low. They say cover it. But I can't cover it because I don't have a cover. Oh, you I do cover. have it. No, it's, it's too small. This, oh. this skillet didn't come with a cover. See what I'm saying? So That's we're going to cook it on low. But I'm just going to cook it on low like that. So hopefully not covering it's going to be okay. So yep. we'll And the wine's going to cook out. And as the, yeah, the wine's going to cook out. So don't worry about the wine being flavorful. And I don't really drink wine. But let's drink this to see if it tastes any good. Oh, really? Oh, this is going to be fun. She's going to actually drink cooking wine. Mm. It's not cooking wine. It's drinking wine. Because it Yeah, it's drinking wine. This is wine. Oh. She says to use a wine that you actually would drink. Oh, that's dope. So we can have this wine with the dinner later on. Cool. If you want. I would. Okay. I can use some wine and some Perfect. rum tonight. So now, while that's doing, I'm going to try to make this ice cream. The last time I made the ice cream, I told you so. I want to make the ice cream while we're waiting on that. And then the dinner probably would be, oh, actually, no, I can't make the ice cream just yet because I got to make the sauce for the Coke oven with the Dijon mustard and the coconut milk. Oh, so let's shit. go and do that now. Okay? Okay. So you can stop. Because I got I made a mistake. I was supposed to bring the, the wine to a boil with the chicken. I was supposed to bring the wine to a boil with the chicken. And once it boils, then I reduce it to low heat. All right? Yes. So right now I'm making the, I guess, coconut milk sauce. I don't know what kind of sauce it is, but um, let me make this sauce. The cocoa bun. It said half a cup of coconut milk. Right, half a cup of coconut milk. Um, then what is it? One tablespoon of Dijon mustard. More cowbell. Yeah. I'm just kidding. One tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Cowbell uh, has no relevance in this. Cowbell? What's a cowbell? Oh, I just felt like saying. I know what a cowbell is, but what is a cowbell? I'm thinking of Christopher Walken. What about a K? He's always said that on Saturday Night Live. But instead of more cowbell, it's more coconut milk. <laughs> uh, one tablespoon gluten free flour. And the gluten free flour, again, just makes it. Uh, it doesn't have to be gluten-free flour. It can be any kind of flour, but the gluten-free flour makes it um, makes the sauce milky. I'm not milky. Uh, thick, thick. That's what I was looking for. Thick. So we're gonna mix this in here. So it's coconut milk, flour, and mustard. Let me get a better spatula to mix it better. Makes it nice, the sauce nice and thick. Oh shit. I feel like there should be more sauce, but I guess I'm just going by the recipe, so I guess this should work you when it goes feel. in like that. Okay, so 15, 20 minutes on that. Okay, once the chicken is cooked through, whisk in the milk, simmer for a few more minutes until thickened a bit, and sprinkle your cocoa van with crumbled bacon. Okay, awesome. so now we're just gonna wait for that to cook. So. While we, while we wait for that to cook, now I think I can make the ice cream. Yay! <laughs> okay? Alrighty. Yes, as you can see, it's starting to boil out very good. And it's coming out really good and really brown. Oh, I can't wait to taste this for you soon. Right, my mom? Well? Yep. So stay tuned on more details on how this is going to turn out. Just want to show you a brief video. Go ahead. Let me know. It's two cups. Coconut milk, but the thing is, with the coconut milk, you want to make sure that it's cold. So when you're making ice cream, you want to make sure that your uh, the ice cream, the coconut milk is chilled, preferably overnight, but or at least for three hours. That's kind of creamy because it's been in there for a while, but it's all right. It's gonna. I said two cups, right? Yes, two you cups, did. Two cups, okay. And bring on the vodka. We're not gonna bring the vodka on oh, now, just just yet. Okay. <laughs> So two cups, let me stir that up to make it a little milky, right? So two cups of that, and then 
let's see we're going to use some sweetener um one third cup of a sweetener of your choice we're going to use some monk fruit yeah not stevia again <laughs> screw stevia yeah because the the monk fruit but where's the this is golden i want the silver the white not silver white but monk fruit mm, silver <laughs> no one third cup of sweetener of your choice so I'm gonna use monk fruit. I love monk fruit, again, because it doesn't uh, have any impact on your blood sugar. And then we've used it in so many keto desserts and you can't taste the sugar. You know, you can't really taste it. So that's what I love about it, that you can't taste the sweet. But it gives some flavor to the what you're cooking. Uh, eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna put a pinch of salt. Nothing too. All right, one and one half tablespoons of pure vanilla. But then I'm gonna. What did it say? A tablespoon of vodka or a teaspoon of vodka? Tablespoon. Very, are you sure it's a tablespoon? Yes, a I'm tablespoon. Really That's why I checked. One tbsp. She's. Because I don't want it to taste like vodka. That's my thing. The vodka. And also because she can't handle one <laughs> cup, so she worries that she'll get tipsy. No, the vodka. But let's reassure her that in the cake that doesn't actually happen. Well, it's ice cream. And the vodka <laughs> is supposed to prevent iciness, okay? Yes. So, let me see. One and one half tablespoons. Hold on. So, it's one and one half tablespoon of vanilla. The last time I made it, the vanilla, I didn't have enough vanilla. And you, it, you could really tell. So, one and one half tablespoon of vanilla. It's very important if you're making vanilla ice cream. And, of course... If you want to like add blueberries and nuts and all that kind of jazz to it, uh, that's fine. And this is a half a tablespoon. There we go. One and one half. The vanilla, you want to make sure you're adding a lot of vanilla to it, okay? Yes. So you can actually have a vanilla taste. So hopefully it doesn't taste like vodka. I mean, I could do a taste test really quick to see if it's going to taste good. <laughs> so. Let's do that, actually. <laughs> What's so funny? You. Why am I funny? It tastes like vodka. It's so silly. <laughs> well, what do you think? Yeah. It tastes good. It tastes like vanilla ice cream. Okay. But yeah. now we just got to cream it up. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeedy. And the, the perfect thing about getting vanilla ice cream, number one, Number one is to make sure that your coconut milk is cold, right? So as I said before earlier, freeze it, not freeze it, uh, refrigerate it for at least overnight. Or if you can't refrigerate it for overnight, make it three hours, about three hours before you actually start to make the ice cream. So now the thing is this loaf pan, when you put the ice cream in here, you want the loaf pan already in the freezer. Yes. So it's ice, ice cold. So that way when you're pouring the ice cream into the loaf pan, um, it could be, uh, I don't know, I forgot why they say, but it, that's an important reason to pour the ice cream in the loaf pan, okay? Yes. So now we're going to do that. The ice cream, the loaf pan has to be super cold. The loaf pan has to be super cold, and we're going to pour the ice cream into it. But I'm a vanilla freak. But here's the thing. We have some toppings. We're gonna have, we have strawberries, too. So for the strawberry shortcake, this is going to be on the side. So for the strawberry shortcake. And the thing is, we got to freeze this. I don't know if it's going to be done tonight. Hopefully it is because it's 6 o'clock. But sometimes you got to freeze it for a while. Um, some recipes say freeze it, like make it a little smooth, let it get halfway freeze and then put it in the Vitamix and then put it back in the freezer. But some recipes say just put it in the freezer for three to five hours. Um, and let's see how that's going to go. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to pour it in the super cold loaf pan. I had more sugar and more vanilla. I have vodka. So hopefully the vodka, what? Oh, the nothing. vodka prevents it from icing up so hopefully let's see if that does the trick so we're going to pour this into the loaf pan right now yes all My right mouth. and then we're going to freeze it yay so in a few uh hours you're going to see that this is a different type of ice cream excellent okay? mm. you can stop it all right go on ready yes so james had to do his live uh oh let me move this parchment paper James had to do his live, so I had to stop and turn this off for a minute. So I'm going to turn it on to heat it back up a little bit. But as you can see, I put the sauce, the Dijon mustard sauce, and let it blend in a bit. So now I'm just going to crumble the bacon over. 
Can I turn on the... That's right. Did that just blow out? Yeah, cool. What? Why is it doing that? I don't know. I think it's because I have all these fans on. But anyway, <clears throat> let me finish crumbling the bacon. Uh, I don't know if the regular one has this. I gotta look up the regular recipe. Because usually when I'm looking at recipes, I look up like the healthier version or whatever, even though this bacon is not that healthy, but it's not like we're eating like 10 slabs of bacon, you know what I'm saying? Yes. It's not like we're eating 10 slabs. Ooh, it's crazy. Do that. Be careful when you're near fire. All right, so I'm just heating this back up a bit. And then it will be ready in less than like two minutes. Excellent. Two minutes. I just want to heat it up because we don't like eating cold food. No, we don't. Uh, there we go. And then I'm heating up the brown rice. Yes. There we go. Excellent. It's going to be good. Okay, we're on. Okay, so we're getting the strawberries ready for the strawberry shortcake. I'm dicing the strawberries. I think I need to spice them a little smaller, but I guess it's a preference of what you want to slice them to. Um, the recipe calls for a low carb powdered sugar, but I don't have low powdered powder sugar. sugar. I, already, I only have this kind of confectioner's powdered sugar, but it's only two tablespoons. I'm going to use that because um, the stevia is just so nasty, and I don't want to mess up this recipe with nasty ass stevia or whatever and then they they you can make your own whipped cream but i just bought whipped cream because whipped cream already has um low calories and things like that i mean it still probably has a lot of fat and stuff but i didn't feel like making regular low carb whipped cream so it's kind of like low carb but it isn't if that makes sense it is and it's not so i just skimped on a few things uh two tablespoons of sugar uh, about one fourth cup is 29 grams, so two tablespoons is not gonna hurt, I don't think. Um, so we're gonna make this because this is for the strawberry filling. There's different ways to make the the filling, you know. Some some say put it in a biscuit. Some say cut the thing in half. But we're just gonna keep it simple today, and we're gonna uh, make this. This is this is for the filling, so we can make it and like make. Put it in the middle. So two tablespoons of powdered sugar that I'm going to go ahead and mix around. You can stop it, James. Okay, go ahead. I use a super small pan, and I didn't even realize. So this is kind of like a different version of strawberry shortcake. I, I'm making my own kind of version. So we're gonna put it like that. Let me get the whipped cream. Hold on. Whipped cream. Whipped cream. <clears throat> there we go. Cream. Make my own version of strawberry shortcake. But let's do that. Yeah. And I'm gonna add another filling to the top. I'm gonna say another cut another piece off like so. And then I gotta cut another piece. <laughs> it's like yum yum. I hope James like you. I mean <laughs> like you know James enjoys it. I mean, I gotta get perfect. I gotta perfect my uh, strawberry shortcake filling skills. But I think the most important thing is that the strawberries and whipped cream are in there, and that's the most. Oh shit! And that's the most important thing. Yes, yes. So there you go, my love. This is for James, and that's a keto-ish strawberry Actually, shortcake. Actually, my love looks great. And yes, the cocoa beer is done. What a great job by Nina. And look, we got some wine to go with it as well. Excellent. So we're about to tear this bad boy down. And yes, thank you guys for tuning in. So, you know, this is a word from the both of us. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video so far. That's so much darker. Hello, Nina Nicole and James Dean. Who? Sarah, how are we doing everybody again? Hey, how's everybody doing? It's been a hot minute since we've been on here. I know James posted a cooking episode like last two weeks ago or something, but we never did like a closing or an opening. So we just wanted to reach out and say, hello, we're here. We've been quarantining and things like that. So 
And uh, we wanted to say love and dining. We've been showing you the dining part, but we haven't been showing you the love part. So I can't believe that we're going to get married in less than what? How many months? Eight months. Less than eight well, months. Seven months. Seven at this months point. at this point. It's so crazy. Yeah. So to take you on a journey, we thought that we would talk about our first date. Right. Yes. So this is impromptu. We didn't prepare. We didn't plan or anything like that. So, James, what was your first impression of me on our first date? You were very gorgeous and you were very <laughs> ambitious and I knew you were very goal oriented. Goal oriented? And you? You knew that by looking at me? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your Tinder profile. Too. Oh, my Tinder profile. Oh, yeah. that's that's what it, thank you for bringing that up. We've actually met on Tinder. We actually met on Tinder and Contrary to popular belief, no, we didn't hook up the first day that we met each other. Actually, we we connected like around July 29th yes. um, and we were talking. We talked for like about a month through text and phone because James couldn't get off from work. He was working a lot of overtime. So we actually didn't meet until August 18th. So we spoke about two and a half weeks over the phone before we actually met in person. So yes, yes. when we talked over the phone, we just talked about the basic stuff, where are you from, how many siblings you have, parents, da, da, da. Also about like what we were looking for in partners and things like that. Like I really wanted to, someone who was ambitious and who was marriage minded and who liked to travel and who was goal oriented and things like that and had a good work ethic and was not a fuck boy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So anyway, so our first date, we met at Penthouse 808. Um, it is a beautiful restaurant venue in Queens, Long Island City that has a beautiful view of um, the New York City skyline. It doesn't have the yes. full view of the city skyline, but it does have, um, what is it? Can you see the Empire State Building? Yeah, there? you could. And what bridge is that over there? The Queensboro Bridge. Oh, the Queensboro Br Bridge, right? I feel like this is so dark. I want more lighting, but whatever. It's okay. Um, so I don't remember what we ordered, but we talked, we just had so much fun. Um, but the thing is when James first met me, it was like around seven, it was summer. So it was still early. And I know one of our previous conversations, he told me, I don't know, I told him that I love calla lily is my favorite flower and my favorite color is purple or yeah, that was and my I favorite got her purple calla lilies too. And he, he got me purple calla lilies, um, a purple calla lily plant that lasted for a while. And then it had a card. I think that card said, um, what did it say? Just like you, you bloom like a lovely flower. It's in yes, my passport. I have two that. passports. One of my passport expired, so I think it's in my expired passport instead of my new passport. So I gotta find my expired passport. And actually, you can't see it because I'm just like dressed right now, but I'm actually wearing the dress that I wore on our first date, James. <laughs> yeah, so I'm wearing the same dress that I wore on our first date and things like that. You can't see it now because, um, Whatever, you can't see it because of the way the camera it looks just as great on hers as it did like about like five that. years ago. And we're so, going to probably put a picture of her dress later on. Yeah. So um, my first impression of James was that he was very handsome. Um, he was very shy. And I just felt comfortable with him. Like when we talked, I can't even remember what we talked about at Penthouse 808, but I was very comfortable with him. It was so much fun. Did we go to um, a rooftop bar after that or no? We went to the we movies. We, we went to what, press? No, no, that we was a press. We didn't that go. Was on a third that day. was like a third we went date. We went to the movies to we, see Suicide we Squad. We went to the movies to see Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. What a name for the first date, right? <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, right. So we went to the movies to see Suicide Squad, and um, during that time, after the movie, like I had to go home because I was living in Long Island in the time, and he yes. was, at the time, and he was living in Brooklyn. And yes. if you're not from New York, like with the train ride is like a two and a half hour ride. Well, from Manhattan, it's like an hour to Long Island where I was living, but from Brooklyn to Long Island when James used to see me every week, what was that, like a two and a half, three hour ride to yeah, come from Brooklyn like to Long Island because you have to take three trains yeah. and then wait and all that kind of stuff or whatever. So that was like a long, tedious process, but we'll oh, talk yeah. about that a different day. But anyway, um, so I actually, who kissed who first? You. <laughs> why? Why were you scared to kiss me on the I first don't date? <laughs> so I don't usually kiss any woman on the first date. You day. never kiss a girl on the first date? Nope. You I never the either. first one. So wait, you never kissed a girl on the first date? So nope. wh when did you kiss a Not on the lips of why, why did you never kiss a girl on the first date? I don't know. I just didn't think it was, it was, um, man, I don't know. I really don't. <laughs> when, did, when do you usually kiss a girl on your second date, third date? 
I don't remember. You don't remember? Okay. So that's new to me. I never knew that after five years, I never knew that he never kissed a girl on the first date. And I made the first move because I really liked him. I was really attracted to him. I liked our conversation. I yes. liked that he listened to me and brung me my favorite flower and things. And it was just so cool. It was just such a great experience. And I'm pretty sure that he like texts me to make sure I got home okay and things like that. And it was just so great. And the thing that I liked about James or loved about James is like, you know, after you go on a first date, like, you know, a lot of people play games and they're like, oh, the three day rule and don't call this person. And we we're past all that. Right. So he would text me right away multiple times a day. He would follow up with me like he would be he was just very like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, attentive attentive thank you that's the yeah. perfect word i'm looking yes. for he was very attentive and like he would like text me and call me like every single day i never had to worry about like oh is he out with another girl or what is he thinking or whatever he always made me feel like because at that time we were well he was dating other people I, I i wasn't but he was like playing the field or whatever like i felt like i was dating other people but i wasn't like i had before i met him I was dating this guy and it was so funny. It was just like, we went on like one or two dates and he was like, he called me, he went on a trip and he was like, you know, I know I just won't be happy with you. And I'm like, okay, thank you for letting me know. <laughs> I was kind of bummed by that, but I was just like, okay, let me give James a chance, right? Because James yes. is very attentive, right? And James like talked about how much he loved my body a lot in the beginning and things yes. like that. And I said, James, I appreciate you. And I know that you love my body because so, so many men, uh, shame me for being voluptuous in a bigger body and stuff. But I was like, can we focus but on not focusing on my that. body? I thank you. And I appreciate that. But let's talk about like stuff with more substance. And James yes. listened and we talked and mm -hmm. throughout the time we started to just like get to know each other better and love each other more and things like that. Okay. So thank you for your patience while we were on a little hiatus of not recording Love and Dining, but we're going to come back with more episodes and hopefully little stories, not too long, about uh, love and dining and talking. Because I, I was like, James, we, we're doing the dining part, but not the love part. So let's talk a little bit more about the love part. It doesn't necessarily have to be about our relationship, yes. but that's who we are. That's what we could speak from because I'm pretty private. Well, we're pretty private about our relationship. Well, I should say I'm pretty yes. private because James wants to shout everything to the <laughs> world, which yes, is fine yes. or whatever. But um, anyway, so more recipes and more love, more, more love, love and yes. recipes on this. And I've been cooking a lot of different recipes and things. So I like, I hope that you enjoy today's episode of the cooking, uh, the cooking series, the cooking, the cooking, cooking segment. I can't talk to that. So anyway, so we really thank you for your patience. We thank you for being a trusted subscriber, a valued subscriber. So tune in to see what's happening with Love and Dining. What will we talk about next week? What will yes. we cook next week? Will it be fancy? Will it be simple? Will it be smooth? Anywho, thank you for tuning into this episode of Love and Dining. Yep, and let's inspire the world one moment at a time. Take care, everybody.